Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video, not only because it is a Christmas in July video, but it is also a collaboration with some very good friends of mine here on YouTube. Every other month, starting in July, we are going to be doing this collaboration and it is called What is on My List? Each of us will send another person two items and one department on a list that you have to use from Dollar Tree in one DIY. This month, my list is going to Lisa Marie at Crafting My Best Life with Lisa Marie, and I am receiving my list from Jenny at Lovely Moments Creating. There will be a link to the playlist for all of the videos in my description box below. I hope you'll go over, check out everyone's video, and see how creative they got with their DIYs. So I've already received my package from Jenny and I cannot wait to open it and see what is on my list. So she sent me a card. Bless your heart for being so nice. My shopping list is a wood sign, a wood box, and my department is party supplies. Jenny says, I'm sure you will create something great. Jenny is so sweet. She also sent me a gift. Oh my goodness. So she sent me two packages of these wood rings. I have never been able to find them in my Dollar Tree. I am so excited to use these. I may not use them in this video, but I'm certainly going to be using them sometime soon. Thank you, Jenny, so much. You are so sweet. Thank you. So I know that in my stash I already have a wood sign and a wood box, but I'm going to have to get creative and head over to Dollar Tree and get something from the party supply section. My local Dollar Tree did not have a lot of party supplies left over since this was right after July 4th weekend. But I was able to find something and I'll show you how I incorporated it. We're going to go ahead and start this project first using one of Dollar Tree's wooden crates as well as one of their chalkboard signs. I'm going to remove the hanger from the back as well as those staples and then give everything a good sanding because these wood pieces tend to have some pretty rough edges. Then I'll clean all that debris up with my mini desktop vacuum. I have this listed in my Amazon store. I love this thing. It cleans up everything so quickly. I'm going to tape off the chalkboard edges with some painter's tape and then using Waverly's Antique Wax, go around the entire frame, including those inside edges, as well as this entire wooden crate. And I like to take a paper towel and kind of blend it in and wipe the excess off. It just leaves it with a beautiful finish. Now allow those to dry for a couple of hours and then I'm going to remove that tape and I'm also using one of Dollar Tree's chalkboard tags. I've gone ahead and went around the edging with the antique wax so that it would match. I'm going to remove that clip from the back and then I created a decal on my Cricut. I know not everyone has a Cricut so I have this as a free printable on my website which is in my description box below. You can go over there, download it, print it out, and then trace this on your project. Or you could also freehand it with a piece of chalk. That would be super cute as well. I made another decal for the chalkboard sign. And now I'm going to attach the two together by sliding the chalkboard sign into the back part of the crate. And I'll hold that in place with some hot glue. Then let your glue set up and make sure you keep everything as straight as you can. And for the party supply portion of my challenge, I'm using these white napkins. I'm going to place about four of these inside of the wooden crate. And then you can use this as a home decor piece and fill it with some of Dollar Tree's small styrofoam balls or some of their Christmas vase filler. But I want mine to be functional. So I'm actually going to fill mine with white powdered donuts. This would be even cuter if I had white powdered donut holes, which would look more like snowballs. And this wooden crate held almost all of those white powdered donuts. How cute would this be if you were having a gathering and you had this as part of your display for your snack foods? I think this turned out really cute 
and I hope you guys like it too. Let me know how I did with my challenge DIY in today's video. Now for our next project, I have previously made a barn tissue box holder, and I'll have a link to that video in my description box below as well as the cards up above. So I bought a couple of extra of these barn-shaped signs at Dollar Tree when they had their Valentine's decor out. I'm going to paint the front wooden rooftop with white chalk paint as well as the top since the whites are two different colors from what I'm using and what the sign already has. Then I'm carefully going to use Waverly's chalk paint in the color crimson and paint the front part of this sign around the edging at the roof as well as the sides and the bottom. This will take two coats to fully cover up the design on the front of this sign. Once that has dried, I'm going to take some Dollar Tree popsicle sticks or craft sticks and we're gonna create a door for the front of our barn. I'm gonna cut each of the ends of about five of those popsicle sticks off straight with my handheld miter shears. I have this listed in my Amazon store in my description box below if you're interested. I made sure to sand each of those ends to make sure they're smooth. So I ended up cutting two of them to one and seven eighths of an inch for the side pieces and then the top and bottom pieces will be two and a quarter of an inch. Once I have that laid out, I'm going to take the other popsicle stick and lay it over from corner to corner, hold it in place, and then draw out where my angles will be so I can cut those corners down. Then I can set that piece down inside of it and take another popsicle stick to go over the corners on the opposite side, hold that in place, draw out again my markings for the corner as well as the inside where the two pieces overlap because you're going to want to cut that out. So this will be two separate pieces when you get done cutting. Then I'll lay that in there, make sure everything's going to fit and line up. And then I'll carefully remove it from the sign, but keep everything in the same place so I'll know how to put them all back together and everything will fit. Then each of these pieces, I'll give two coats of the white chalk paint, including the sides and the ends. And then once those dry, I'm going to hold a ruler at the bottom so that I can place the bottom part of the door in the center of the barn. And then I'll line up those sides and top pieces so that when I get ready to glue those down, I can make sure everything stays straight and in line. Then I'll go ahead and add that cross piece in the center, the long one. And then again, I like to hold those two smaller pieces in place so I'll know exactly where to glue it down and that they, the angles will meet in the middle like they're supposed to. Then I'm gonna use this wreath. This came off of a previous sign that I had that I just kept in my stash, but you could certainly make one with some Dollar Tree garland. I'm gonna hot glue that down to the top and then using one of these picks from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna pull a couple of those red berries off and glue those down where the styrofoam is not showing. If you pull a couple of pieces off and the styrofoam is still showing, you could always touch that up with some red paint. To add some extra cuteness, I'm gonna use this small gingham bow. This came off of a Walmart ornament that I had in my stash. I'm gonna glue that down to the bottom. And then to remove any of the glue strands, I'm just gonna take a dry paintbrush and just swipe those out. This project is finished. I love how it turned out. I am very partial to barn decor. So I truly love this piece and I hope you guys like it too. If you're enjoying today's video so far, I would love it if you would hit that like button. It really does help my channel. And if you haven't done so already, I would love for you to become part of our community by clicking on the subscribe button right below this video. To all my current subscribers, thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you would like to visit me on my other social media accounts, all those links are in the description box below. For this project, we are using one of these house shape signs from Dollar Tree. It measures five and a half inches wide and seven and a half inches tall. I'm gonna carefully push the backing out and then remove the paper from that 
Take some sandpaper and sand down all those edges where that excess paper was left. And then I will remove all that debris and give the frame itself one coat of Waverly Antique Wax. But of course, you could paint this any color you like. I'm using some of this beautiful black and red gingham print scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna line that up to make sure that my design is going to be even on each side and then I can trace and cut that out. Using some Mod Podge, I'm going to attach the paper to the frame itself. You just wanna make sure you put a nice even layer of Mod Podge on there. Then I'm using this plastic roller that Plaid makes to make sure the paper is pushed down evenly. Then I can attach this back onto the frame using some hot glue. And then to decorate it, I'm using two of these bottle brush trees. These came from Walmart, but Dollar Tree also carries them. I'm going to hot glue one on each side. And then in the center, I am using this toy soldier that I found at Family Dollar last year for a dollar. It is so adorable. I'm gonna hot glue that one down in the middle. And to decorate the top, I'm using the bottom part of this ornament from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to remove that from the ornament itself. And because the red was a little bit of a different color than my scrapbook paper, I took a black Sharpie to go over that. Now some of the red still shows through, so it looks really pretty, but it just helped it to blend in a little bit better with the decor piece I'm making. I'm going to attach that at the top with some hot glue. And then I remembered that I had removed one of those tags off of the Dollar Tree decorative boxes and I kept the tag and the screws. So I'm just gonna add those screws in the holes at the top of this sign and it's just gonna give it a nice finished touch. And again, I love how this project turned out. You can always paint the frame whatever color you like or use a different type of background for the scrapbook paper, but you guys let me know what you think of project number three. And for our final project, we're using this eight by 10 photo frame from Dollar Tree. This has the border in it. That's pretty important because once you take the border out, the actual inside measurements of the frame are eight and a half by 10 and a half. I'm gonna remove everything, including the glass and just keep the frame and the backing. Then I found this box at Dollar Tree last year. It was in a pack of three. It was like right in the middle and I was so excited to use it, but it was at the end of the season. So I knew I wanted to use it this year. Using the insert from the frame, I'm going to cut the design out from the box using a utility knife. And to make it more sturdy, I'm gonna cut out a piece of Dollar Tree foam board. Now stick with me to the end of the project because this is not gonna be just a picture in a frame. We're gonna do something special with this. So I'm going to attach that to the foam board using Mod Podge. Make sure your Mod Podge has dried, so let it dry for a couple of hours because we're going to be using some Dollar Tree LED lights to really decorate this piece up. So I want to attach these from the back side of the sign. So I'm gonna set these on two pieces of wood so I'll be able to use my drill and not drill through my table. I wanna start off by drilling out where the headlights are and then I'll drill some holes where the tree is on top of the truck. I've already counted how many lights I have so I know how many holes to drill in the tree. And when I flip that over, I'm gonna start with the end piece of the lights and start on the furthest side and work my way to the other side. Now you may have a light, like in my case, the one right above the headlights is not gonna have anywhere to go because it's a little bit of a distance between the headlights and the tree. Make sure you pull your battery pack down to the bottom. I use some scotch tape to hold the wire in place. You can use a tiny bit of hot glue if you need to. Put this back into the frame. Don't put the backing back on yet because our wires are sticking up and we don't have room for the backing. So I wanna cover that up and to do so, I'm gonna use some of these paint sticks from Lowe's. They come in a pack of 10 for a dollar. I'm gonna hold that to the back of the sides of the sign to make my mark so I can cut that down with my miter box. Then holding those in place, I can mark where I need to cut the top and bottom pieces. It is important to keep the handle on the bottom piece because you'll need that groove so that you'll be able to feed your battery wire through it. 
but you want the solid piece to be at the top. So once I have all of those cut out and sanded down, I'm gonna go over these with Waverly Antique Wax because this matches my frame. But again, you could paint it whatever color you like. Once they're dry, we're going to attach these to the back of the frame. Make sure your tabs are pushed down pretty flat and your wires are gonna be able to be below the paint sticks. I'm gonna hold these in place using hot glue and I'm going to attach the sides first so that when I attach the tops and the bottoms, I can add the hot glue to the sides of those side paint sticks and everything will be held together nicely. Now down at the bottom where that handle groove is, you wanna make sure that you have your battery pack in place so that that wire will go under that handle. Then you can glue that in place and let it set up. Then we can attach the backing that came with the frame onto the back of our sign using some hot glue around the border. Then just make sure you press that flat and you can touch up any paint edges if you've missed any of those. I'm going to attach the battery pack to the bottom part of the sign, making sure the screw is at the top so I can change those batteries later if need be. This is also going to help the sign stand up on its own. I love how this piece turned out. It looks almost like a shadow box sign. I think it's simply gorgeous, which I thought the box was gorgeous anyway. And it is so beautiful at night. I love the way it lights up. You guys, if you have a favorite out of today's video, please let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite. I always like to know. Don't forget to check out the playlist for the Christmas in July collab with my very good friends here on YouTube. I have that in my description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please take care and I'll see you next time.